Hello, so this is the latest version of Ubuntu Studio. This is version 19.04. Now, uh, Ubuntu, for those of you who don't know, is a distribution of uh, Linux, which is a sort of alternative operating system to Windows or Mac OS. And Ubuntu is sort of is is sort of one of the staples. One, it's one of the it's one of the most popular ones that a lot of people go to. And Studio is the version created specifically for creatives in mind. And so, as a musician, I like to use a lot of the features and tools that Ubuntu Studio has in it because there's a lot of it is directed heavily at musicians. So, uh, on the installation, I would untick a lot of things I'm not going to use, but I thought I'd actually just show you what's in store on the new version of Ubuntu Studio version 19.04. Let's take a look. So first things first, I just wanted to talk, uh, talk about this really, really cool wallpaper. Now normally, uh, when, I, when I install any new system, I will just immediately get rid of the wallpaper and change it to something else, but to be perfectly honest, I'm I'm going to keep this one for ages. I think this is this is a really, really cool wallpaper. This is actually um, just a redo of the standard one. So, you know I said how Ubuntu is sort of one of the most popular um, Linux distributions. Uh, there's, there's lots of different spins of it, Ubuntu Studio being one of them, and if I go onto Ubuntu's normal website, we'd see that their background looks a bit more like this, and all the different ones have a slightly different colour schemes, but, um, you know, leave it to Ubuntu Studio, the one that's made for, you know, like I said, musicians, video managers, but also graphic designers and artists, to come out with what I think is one of the coolest looking ones. I'm going to be keeping this for a while. So, uh, this is the standard layout we get. Uh, now, the desktop environment we're running here is XFCE, which is a, in its version 4.12, which is what it's been for ages. It's a nice, uh, lightweight environment. If I just bring up my thing, you've got some stats on here for what I'm using. And it's got its task at the top right now, but I'm later on going to move all this down. Because right now, this is a this is a pretty standard installation of Ubuntu Studio. Uh, I've only added a couple of things. I haven't really removed anything yet. But once once I'm done with this video, I'm going to be heavily customising this a lot more. Which is one of the really good parts about using Ubuntu or using GNU Linux in general, is that there's a lot of customizability that can go on. For those of you who care, if I just bring up the terminal here, uh, I know some people like to see what we're using out of the out of the gate. So obviously there's going to be a bit of um, stuff going on because I've got OBS running and I've got two tabs up on a web browser right now as well as obviously the terminal. But here's a little bit of HTOP at the moment. So yeah, it's it's, it's okay. Uh, I to be honest, I feel like in some in some uh, distributions that XFCE could be uh, running a bit lighter, but when you also consider everything else that's going on underneath the hood here, it can make a bit of a sense as to why a lot of the stuff is sort of a bit more bloated. But if I come back to, if I open a new one here and just do screen fetch again, you'll see how we are using the low latency Linux kernel. I can't really highlight that, but right there, it's low latency. So uh, the Linux kernel is actually the part of um, the operating system which we have, which, which is actually Linux itself. And it's the uh, protocol that, that sort of allows hardware and software to communicate with each other. Um, one of the really key parts of Ubuntu Studio that makes it great for musicians like myself in particular is the fact that the kernel itself runs on low latency. Basically, you know, if you're if you're using um, if you're using recording software, it's you're not going to get bloated slightly more by the kernel. It's going to be a little bit quicker. This might not be the best for all people, all use cases, but I use this for more than just uh, music. And to be honest, I've never felt any difference between it and the normal one. By that I mean I've never felt a sort of negative of having it when using non-audio applications. This is based on Ubuntu, like I said. If we go onto Ubuntu Studio's website, here is where you can find it. Let's have a quick look at their release on here. So for the most part, in other spins of Ubuntu, the 1904 release has not been a huge one. It's sort of, you know, the standard affair of, you know, updating a lot of the packages, um, updating the security, of course, and, you know, making it just a little bit punchy, a little bit quicker. But according to Ubuntu Studio, they're saying it's one of the more featureful ones they've had in a little while. Uh, Ubuntu Studio has been sort of not on a slump, but they've sort of just been puttering along with the same old, same old. They were almost slipping behind some of the others in, in even their design, which, you know, is, was, was bad for a while because obviously being a creative and being a design centric distribution, you know, you don't want to be falling behind the others. And in fact, you see this, this uh, PPA they had. Um, when I was running Ubuntu Studio 18.10, of well anything before today uh, i'd actually added that in and it brought a lot of the features and the and the sort of the viewing and the and the load screen and everything on this distribution to be like it is on 1904 now and it's a vast vast improvement it looks stunning i really like it i think it looks i think it looks a little bit snazzier than my uh than my windows partition i use as well actually so they yeah one of the things i'm pointing out is uh, the the um the uh, studio install has been updated a bit here uh some of the some of the way it looks look wasn't so good uh, things like Carl has been updated. So that's a great way of uh, to of replacing sort of jack rack and actually having a having the ability to sort of um, configure and patch audio systems between audio systems within Ubuntu Studio. Because as we're about to look when we take a look at the actual packages installed by default on this, um, there are so many sort of slightly disconnected um, audio packages 
that you would think normally like, oh, you know, it's going to be try hard to run that on this or that on that. But one of the great things about Windows Studio, one of the great things about Ardor, the uh, the digital audio workstation that comes installed uh, standard on this, is you can sort of, uh, using Jack and using other things like Carly, you can take audio sources from one point, send them to another, pass them through. It's it's like having, and well, as it's, as it's visually represented on here, it's like having a proper rack that you can simply patch, you know, patch cables through to connect everything up. As far as a musician's concerned, everything makes a lot of sense, sort of, as you would see them. So there's been a lot of things updated on here, uh, different things in the release. Uh, you can see all of this if you go on the links. I'm going to leave, leave a links list and a link to where to download this in the description to this video. So with that out of the way, let's have a look at what's actually installed in here. So as, I, as I sort of pointed out earlier, we've got um, XFCE version 4.12 as the desktop environment, which I really, really like. It's super customizable. It's quite lightweight compared to a lot of others. Incredibly, incredibly stable as well. I actually moved away from GNOME to XFCE. GNOME's still my second favorite, but it was just a bit too unstable, whereas XFCE is so snappy and customizable. I love it. So let's go on here. Um, and as you can see, something that sort of goes against my sensibilities personally is that it's a sort of dark on light theme. So I'll show you if I bring up the file manager Thuna on here, we can see, uh, yeah, it kind of, it's a bit, I feel like I find it a bit jarring, but a lot of people do like having sort of a light one. So uh, that can e easily be changed. I'm going to leave it as standard. Thuna is quite good as well. Uh, the one thing it's lacking, in my opinion, is a good uh, or search all around feature. But with Linux, you can simply down download another uh, file manager and use that instead. So uh, this is this is the Whisker menu as comes as in standard, the sort of the the start menu essentially. And what I'm going to do is just to make this easier to see, I'm going to drag everything out here so we can have a look. So this is the sort of favorites bar, which you know they stick their sort of standard stuff in. It's it's it's, it's for you to really start. Um, exploring and let's have a quick look down these side categories here so i'm not going to bother going on all so i'm going to look at everything i'm going to look at a couple of the other packages i've installed that you know aren't really necessary here for example i've installed the synaptic package manager which doesn't come as standards on this uh, we're going to look at the audio production section section at the graphic design section the video production section and then maybe a couple of the others uh, in fact let's quickly look at the others just because they're standard stuff so in accessories we've got you know calculator archive manager font viewer everything like that Good stuff. Uh, oh, one thing I would want to talk about here is it does come with the XF Burn feature, which is very handy if you want to burn uh, CDs or DVDs or anything, uh, which uh, some people don't care about anymore, but I personally have a uh, Blu-ray reader and writer in my computer, and I do like to use to make those from occasion, especially if you're a musician. Uh, even though so many things are done so online and streaming nowadays, sometimes you knew you just need to get a CD out there. Uh, you know, we've got this in here. This is part of the LibreOffice suite. Uh, it actually comes with a couple of games, if you care. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll be uninstalling these to make room later. Uh, and there, obviously, we have uh, Firefox. But then we also have a couple of interesting things in here. Uh, it's it's got the KDE Connect part, which is it is a um, a thing made for the KDE desktop environment. But I think Miles also work with this somehow, uh, where you actually uh, download the companion app onto your phone. Uh, it definitely works on Android. I'm not so sure about iOS. Where you can sort of interact in between it. Uh, useful if you care. Um, or got sort of the Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird Mail, which is a good mail server. And transmission, which is for downloading BitTorrent clients. But uh, one thing I want to talk about here is the Internet DJ console. That is something that you don't get on a normal version of Ubuntu that's specific to um, Ubuntu Studio here. So if you're interested in, at all in doing sort of podcasting or Internet DJ or anything like that, this sets you up out of the box. And not only this, but um, all the other things, you know, Jack support, uh, being able to make stuff and then stream it through there, all sort of immediately on this package. It's, it's if you need to you know, get up and go and start making music and making stuff on your computer. I'm just a great way to go because you can simply install it and away you go. Uh, we've got a media playback here. Yeah, we've got a bit more of the Jack Mixer here. We've got the Parole Media Player, which is the sort of standard video video uh, player for uh, XFCE, but we also have the more popular VLC. Uh, I'm personally uh, do prefer VLC because of the amount of conversions, everything you can do in it so easily. We have a XJ however you pronounce that. In Office, we have a couple of sort of, you know, sort of standard document things in here. Uh, then we have the uh, LibreOffice suite, which is to the same standard as uh, Microsoft Office. And I do have the latest version of Microsoft Office on my Windows drive. And yeah, I can say that I quite happily switch between them. And uh, using this so much now uh, has made me think that I will never really bother paying for another uh, license for um, Microsoft Office again, because LibreOffice is just as good. We also have a PDF arranger on here, which is another uh, thing that you don't get on standard Ubuntu releases. And this is just if you have, you know, a large array of PDFs and everything. This is going more into if you're using this uh, as a writer, for example, which is one of the other uh, parts that Ubuntu Studio also caters for. So just on that topic, 
Uh, we'll just do a tens decator for. Um, From my experience, obviously, I'm gonna, I'm slightly biased here. I think it seems to be musicians first, but obviously, you know, that's what I come in here for. So that's what I would see. So, so you see how video video creators, and you have you know graphic designers, you've got artists, you've got you know authors, and people who make other sort of technical manuals. Photography is also a big thing on here, although of course you know, that could come in with um, sort of image manipulation, graphic design, everything like that. Uh, I think there is some programming stuff on here, but I don't know so much on that. Uh, there's animation, I know, because I think they have Blender on here as well. And there's other things that you would want, even if, say, you're not necessarily someone who creates a lot, but you work with things. So, so of this PDF arranger here. Say, you know, you don't necessarily make and write a lot of PDFs yourself, but you have a lot that you, you don't have to manage. Something like this might be a more useful view. So not just for creatives, but for also wanting to sort of manage a large amount of media. Then in the system, you get the sort of standard things you'd get. Um, one thing that you wouldn't normally see on here, or two things actually you wouldn't normally see on here, is HTOP, which was the um, which was the sort of system monitor I had on there. I just installed that because a lot of people like to see the sort of, it's a bit more in-depth than other ones, and the NVIDIA X server settings on there. That's just for recording this, I wanted to have my uh, proper graphics drivers up to date on my computer. So before we look at, before we look at the other parts, we have studio, Ubuntu Studio information on here, which comes about information on the system, as just Ubuntu in general, uh, XFC, and then you can, a lot of these are links to, so if I take you there, for example, it's just going to be a link to their website that'll just boot up in Firefox, which is a standard uh, web browser on this system. So let's now have a quick look at uh, get right into the nitty gritty on all of what we've got on here. So first thing we have audio production and it, as you can see, once you jump into one of these fully featured uh, sections, things start to really pop out at you. So let's go through it part by part. So in audio utilities here, we have Q Jack Control. So this is a uh, Jack audio connection kit uh, GUI interface using the Qt or the Qt um, sort of graphics protocol, I think you would call it. Uh, basically, if you don't know, uh, there's two major ones in Linux. There's Qt or Qt and there's GTK. Uh, XFC uses GTK mostly, but basically, you know, one works on the other. Unless you're one of these people that really cares about having it all being one way or being the other, it'll work just fine. Then we'd have effects. And this is where start, things start to get really interesting. Say if you're just using audio plugins and things on Windows. So for example, I like to use Pro Tools on my Windows um, installation. Uh, some of my, uh, a lot of my plugins, you know, they, they exist entirely within Pro Tools. So I can't really, and obviously if I installed another door, I'd be able to open it in there. But, you know, to actually get to them, I'd have to open them up in here. On Linux and using uh, free and open source um, audio plugins in particular, they all exist as independent packages, which is kind of the Unix philosophy. But... As you can see, a lot of them are sort of stating that they are for Jack use as well. The whole point of the Jack interface is, like I said, if I were to open, uh, you know, we've got our door down here, the main DAW for the system, um, I would be able to patch just as I was using a, a patch cable on some racks, uh, one thing into another. If you think about it like that, it makes everything make so much more sense. And it's quite freeing because you don't have to think about things in the sense of, oh, no, can this only work with this? Can this only work with this? No, bugger that. Patch it through. Get it to work. It's all quite fun. The uh, calf packs in particular uh, have a lot of stuff in them that are really fun to look at. Uh, then we have software instruments. Of course, uh, calf, you're going to see calf reappearing quite a lot because it's quite a fully featured set. Uh, lots of synths and samplers in there. Uh, I know quite a few people like to use Ubuntu Studio to make electronic music and EDM, which is not what I'm so great at. Um, I tend to do more recording, uh, you know, rock uh, stuff like metal, stuff like that. But there's a lot of stuff in here and the stuff I've heard some people make sound fantastic. And if you do want to look a bit more into it, uh, there's a YouTube channel of a guy called Unfa. UNFA, who's a uh, Polish musician who makes uh, electronic music using Ardor and using um, Linux, and it sounds fantastic the stuff he does. And MIDI utilities, so this is a bit more if you want to, if you if you use a lot more actual like straight up MIDI components. But obviously, we have things with Jacksport and and uh, ALC support here, so things can always be patched through one bit to another. Uh, also, if you uh, have a Linux system already installed and it's not Ubuntu Studio, but you want to try any of these, you know, uh, most of these I know are available in a lot of places repositories. So, you know, just pause the video where you want, have a look and see what they're like. Um, then mix this in card controllers. Very useful for, for uh, especially if you're like me and you have an audio interface and stuff you just want to sort of get loaded. But luckily, um, I'm using a M Audio M Track Plus and my system immediately recognized it. That's part of the beauty and the power of the Linux kernel is that the more it's getting updated, it's getting updated sort of rapidly and it's always having development. You know, if I could, I could be very happy to go out and buy a brand new, like the latest M Audio product and it, um, I'm pretty, I'm 95% sure it would work just fine. And it didn't used to be this way, you know, you sometimes you'd, you'd hear people saying that you should wait a little while for a piece of hardware to become older. No, now, now Linux, you can just build this most upright, powerful stuff you can 
and even if things aren't super optimized out of the box they will be later and to be honest windows has the same problem uh, some things are never super optimized out of the box and to be honest uh, if you don't want to have a headache and want just stuff to just work not to quote apple's marketing there then it tends to do a little bit better of a job for example uh, on my windows 10 system to actually get this the um, audio track plus to work i have to go on the website and download a specific driver on this the linux kernel just works out for me and uh, all of the all of the features work just fine it sounds the same it's great so then we have you know windows studio controls a bit more so this is a lot more so that they've they've cut up with this area and this is a lot more for sort of for actually like analyzing our signal and getting everything right through there and then we get into sort of the stuff you'd actually mix up with so we have ardor which is a brilliant free and open source um daw digital audio workstation we have audacity which is a far simpler tool um but a lot less overhead um a lot of people have probably seen and used audacity and you know it's not known for being um it's not known for being fantastic if you want to you know record a whole album that's where you'd have ardor Need to do a quick bit of audio, you know, recording, go for it there. If you want to actually record music and other stuff, Ardor. Although, if we also go to LMMS, that's another great one to go for. Now, I find that um, if you want something to compare it to, Ardor is like Linux's answer to Pro Tools. Whereas LMMS is sort of like Linux's answer to, I'd say, to Logic or to Cubase. Uh, it's a little bit less amazingly featured than Ardor might be. Uh, if you want to record actual sounds, so you know using microphones, inputting instruments, stuff like that. But if you, if you, everything you do is all sequencing and digital, LMS is a fantastic way to go with that. Especially if you want to specialize in that. Then we have some more um, diverse here. We have some more CD and DVD creation tools. Uh, we have some drum kit ed editors, some hydrogen drum kits. Um, but then one thing, one of the first disappointments I see on here is that um, we are being shown Muse Score Two when Muse Score Three has been out for ages at this point um you know by the by the, this is uh this is the 20th of april as you can see so uh, i think this i think uh 19.04 came out a day or two ago and as time of recording a music score 3.0.5 is the current one it's a real shame that they're using a, a really old version of music score and using music score version 2 uh, like i said that's, that's the first major disappointment i've had so far i'm gonna see if i can try and update it uh but it's pretty upsetting that it's 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 version two. Muse score is actually um, far far better than some people give it credit for. So um, on my Windows system, I'm I do have a copy of Muse score which I use for certain things. But my main piece of notation uh, writing software that I like to use is Sibelius. But at this point in time, the one thing that's stopping me from just completely jumping over to Muse score is that Muse score can't currently open um, Sibelius files. If it if it ever manages to be able to do that. I seriously don't see a need to ever bother with Sibelius or Finale or anything like that. And one of the great things MuseScore can do uh, is opening up guitar profiles. For those who, who who can't get access to or can't afford a copy of Guitar Pro, you can uh, use some of its files or just open to read at least its files using this legitly. Then we have some more uh, sort of sound samplers and data things and everything else and got some loopers. And this guy's new. I don't remember... Um, in that sub being in uh, this synthesizer being in uh, the last version of Ubuntu Studio, so I'll be interested to see that. So let's go over to the graphic design section. Uh, at this point, you're going to hear me sort of not knowing so much about it because, uh, really, uh, for me, the small, small amount of graphic design I do is a uh, is out of necessity. It's mostly just just make stuff for this channel and for for sort of band projects and everything. But let's just have a look at it for those of you who are interested. Yeah, see what I mean? Right, they've got this. If you know what these are. <laughs> Then go for that. Uh, I feel like I should have a. Uh, obviously, we have things like simple scan, and everything. That's just a normal system utility. Uh, I think some of these are what are these curve views. I think this is to do with. Uh, is this to do with a light or color correction on your monitor? Something like that. People who actually know what they're on about in graphics will be able to tell you. And I'm hoping because I made this video because I couldn't find a musician talking about the most latest update of Ubuntu Studio, so I thought I'd do it myself. I'd like to see someone maybe a graphic designer do a video similar to mine where they can actually sort of tell you what the hell's going on on their side of things. Because like I said, um, with me, you're going to get sort of layman's at the best. And photography. Oh, I know Darktable is meant to be quite good for uh, developing images. And I think a bit of picture correction, picture editing as well. I don't know much about Entangle. Uh, Rapid Photo Downloader is very good, I think. And Raw, this we're all upon, for downloading uh, raw files. Especially if you're using SD cards or things. Because sometimes, um, for example, when I'm filming uh, myself on my camcorder, 
uh, I will plug it in and you know it'll have to be a certain battery amount that I have to hit enter and then I have to go digging through the files and just just select the ones I want I can tell you it's a bit of a pain in the butt and especially if you're a photographer not just someone who's a uh, filming just not as a filmmaker uh, and you take loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of pictures you do not want to have you don't want to have to be going file by file by file by file some like this is going to make your life so much easier I knew that the Ristretto uh, image viewer is the standard image viewer on XFCE. And something for those of you who are not so familiar with um, Linux systems, your desktop environment is actually the thing you see in front of you. So that's why um, pictures of Linux you'll see all seem to be quite different from each other, because it's all slightly different. Um, it's nothing to be intimidated by. Basically, try a couple, see what you fancy. Um, but each of them come with their, normally with their own set of tools uh, that are built to sort of work with them the best. So um, there are different image viewers, and to be honest, they're mostly the same. And uh, you know, not not to not to um, you know talk badly of the work that the programmers that make them do, but a lot of them do a similar job. And uh, one of the great things about it is you don't need to necessarily follow the protocol of your desktop environment and use uh, just the things that are normally made with it in mind. Instead, you can swap things out. Try a couple, see what you like. So now we've got sort of some more standard ones. Uh, we've got the document from the e uh, book viewer on there, which we also had, I think, in the uh, was that in the office part as well for people who like to use ebooks. And the document viewer I find is is okay, but I think it sort of loses out slightly to um, say LibreOffice, for example. Font Manager Font Viewer, very useful. Uh, oh, and the, another great thing about Ubuntu Studio is that it comes with a massive pack of um, fonts out of the box. And one great thing to do is, if you want a load of fonts and you're not even using Ubuntu Studio, is see if you can download the meta package for their fonts. Because it is just packaged up in the normal Ubuntu repositories. I think it might also be sent to Debian, potentially. I know the Ubuntu derivatives will be able to get it. And basically, you just flood yourself with as many fonts as you like. Really useful. Now, here's a graphic design tool or two or three in a row actually here that I actually like to use. Uh, the GNU image manipulation, Im image manipulation program, GIMP, or the uh, free software version of um, Photoshop. I've only used Photoshop occasionally. Like I said, I'm not a particular, I'm not a graphics designer, but I can hardly tell the difference between the two. And to be honest, I'm happy to use GIMP forever more, really. GIMP is simply a great tool for, for being able to work out whatever color is on your system at all. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this on Windows as, a, as just a built-in tool, but I wish they would actually, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you. So I can just look at, you know, the blue on the mouth of the dingo there to get a color. I've got a color for this bit. You know, I can get the white on there and get the full FF. I can go on to the green bin here, get a different color. Um, possibly its only downside is the fact that if you see on the icon there, it shines slightly when I go onto it. So the color changes. If there was a way of making your, of other things ignore your mouse, that'd be great. But having this when you're trying to customize your desktop environment when you're trying to do something for example in GIMP with photo editing or, or picture editing it's super 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 like useful especially if um, say you don't have an artist's eye for color or if if you might be colorblind for example you don't have to trust your eyes then you can simply hover the mouse cursor over and it'll tell the exact color code it is then you'll know you can be right and exactly right now, Critter is one that a lot of people have been saying have been praising recently for being potentially like a, a, a gimp killer or as being a great uh, painting program and image manipulation. So that's so if you're into doing stuff like that, that's definitely worth a look. They got some pixel art image editors, uh, Scrib Scribus, Scribus. Um, this is what I know some authors like to use uh, when you, if you want to get a bit more in depth with how things are going to look on an actual page in a book compared to LibreOffice. And then this one is a 2D animations and compositions studio. So uh, most of this, to my personal taste, I'll be uninstalling because I simply won't be using it. Uh, Blender's that 3D animation one is also used for uh, video editing as well. Uh, I don't really have a need for it. So next up is uh, video production. So uh, yeah, on video production, like I said, like I mentioned before, Blender is used for a bit of uh, video editing as well. Some people do use it as their actual video editor. Got some more color stuff here. So this is, this is now for using um, audio plugins, host, and things like that, and which you can also then connect to um, video editors or video players. And that's, that is another great thing about Jack and sort of customizability of it is any anything that makes an audio source either has an input for an audio source or an output for an audio source can be connected and sort of rerouted through this very very useful we've got a couple more uh, burning things some uh, stuff for specific uh, base sound cards i don't think mine is one of those so i imagine i'll be getting rid of those then we have the um video editor that i love to use kdn live which uh, fantastic video editor uh, you will hear many many people singing its praises uh, online it's really really bloody good but one I've heard of recently is called Olive. So I'm wondering if by the next release of Ubuntu Studio, if we're going to see Olive on here as well. Now I'm just going to skip OBS for a second because that's not automatically on the system. I think it's a shame that it isn't. We've got OpenShot, which is sort of like a competitor to Cajun Live. But for me, it's, it, it seems very unstable. I mean, Cajun Live on occasion has been, 
But open shot hardly ever seems to work for me. I've uh, got another one, uh, PTV here. I've never really used it. Subtitle editor is good if you want to actually add subtitles into things later. I've uh, got some screencasting here. I guess that's what I could have used for this, but I wanted to use OBS instead, and then some more video editors down here. Now, one thing I did want to talk about is the fact that OBS doesn't come as standard on this system, which I think is a bloody shame. So, for that, I had to uh, install OBS. So, what I normally do is this. So normally, I would go on this system, I would, uh, oh, sorry, I would go on a website, I'd come on here, and I would install their PPA, which is a system that Ubuntu has where you can add sort of more up to date versions of packages onto your system and then install it. One of the awkward things about these six monthly releases of Ubuntu is that sometimes it takes, you know, a couple of days, maybe a week after the release for all the PPAs to be fully set up. So it wasn't set up on this one. And so that left me with two options. We are running uh, OBS 0 0.01, which is a very, very, very old release of it. And this is the one I got through the standard package manager. So, you know, sudo apt install OBS Studio. Now, one of the big things that Ubuntu are sort of holstering up in their, um, in recent times, I've been these snap packages, which are a brilliant idea on paper, but they're still a bit rough around the edges at the moment. They're getting better, but um, I did indeed try to install um, OBS as a snap package, and it installed the latest version, but it refused to run outright. So I'm I'm down to using this one, and I'm really hoping it's gonna, not, it's gonna work on me, although so far, uh, Fingers crossed, touch wood. It's been very stable on me. So those are, those are two things I'm actually, that's my second disappointment. Or well, actually, you should compare two or three disappointments. I'm firstly very disappointed that OBS does not come as standard in Ubuntu Studio, seeing as it's such a wide used synonymous software for recording and for streaming. Uh, I think it really should be in there. And secondly, the fact that Ubuntu Studio, if, if Ubuntu themselves are going to be a bit lazy and only have version 0 0.01 as the standard installed version, then um, Ubuntu Studio themselves should be having a more up-to-date version already installed just as you go. Although talking about um, having things up to date, you know, when it, when it comes to things like this, I will be uh, seeing if I can get Muse Score free to go on my system. Because of course, you're not just stuck to the versions that come installed originally. You can add PPAs or you can try and install other versions. And one thing I am always curious to check on is KDN Live. One thing I do like to do is I like to add the PPA in about a week afterwards and normally things will start, it'll just be a little quick update to get things a little bit more further up to date. So yeah, the, this seems to be a really, really great version of Ubuntu Studio. Um, the last version that came out, you know, I was happy with and everything, but things weren't, they, you know, it was just, it was kind of was just puttering along a bit, whereas this version seems to be a little bit more, I don't know, it feels a little bit more powerful. It seems like, for the most part, things are pushing through a bit more. They're getting rid of some of the old stuff, adding in some new stuff, especially on the audio front. The audio front is the point at which, with the exception of Muse Score, where I think they're doing the, where I think they're doing the most work. Uh, I'm hoping that that's not just the case, and that um, everyone else is getting enough love um, in the graphic design, audio, produ sorry, video production side of things. Uh, it's hard for me to tell. Like I said, I don't use a lot of those things. Uh, but yeah, everything that we're getting new sense and stuff. It seems like we're getting new stuff coming in. Um, and also, just the fact that they've spruced it up, given us a lovely new icon theme. I'm really loving this icon theme. Brilliant representation of the uh, of the Disco Tingo on there, and I feel like this uh, this distribution in particular suits the uh, that picture of a Disco Dingo more than any others. And I, the only thing that would that could have potentially made this even slightly better is if they just edited that to be the same as even to pseudo specific logo. So uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful. And uh, if you are if you have any questions about using Ubuntu Studio and you've never used it before and you're considering giving it a go, uh, you know, feel free to um, leave a comment below. Uh, I'm not a super expert by any stretch of imagination. Uh, I've been using uh, Linux since very, very late 2015. So it's been about, uh, it's gonna, it's three and a bit uh, coming up to four years of me using it now. And I still feel like there's a lot more for me to learn in Ubuntu Studio. But to be honest, it's the more I use it, the more it feels like a solid or sort of professional grade operating system. And at this point, my all of my video production has moved entirely over here. I do basically none of it in Windows anymore. Uh, I'm still a big fan of using things like Sibelius and things like Pro Tools, which I've tried getting to work on Wine, and Sibelius is, is kind of okay on it, actually. Uh, Pro Tools, I have not been able to get it to install yet, but I will certainly uh, try, and if I can work out how to, I will um, possibly do a video on that. Because that'd be nice to have one here. Although, to be honest, I'm personally more into the idea of uh, trying to use uh, Ardor instead, as um, uh, Spectre Sound Studios has even done a video on how, you know, things aren't quite how they used to be, and it's not so much a case of learning to use just the uh, industry stands anymore, and to use lots of different DAWs can be a lot more useful, and so I might just try and champion Ardor a bit. 
um, although I need to give that a bit more practice first. So, yeah, if you enjoy this, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah. I think I might do another catch up on this when we come back into it uh, in, uh, in what was it, in 19.10. Uh, in the meantime, there's going to be other videos coming up on my channel, and uh, yeah, I will see you again soon. Goodbye.